Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This is an updated video for our kit for the BBS HD motor. Released in 2015, this beast of a motor has been incredibly popular. It's not the prettiest, lightest, or most sophisticated, but it is incredibly reliable. It's really easy to maintain, and it gives you up to 1700 watts of power at 30 amp stock. In fact, it's so strong and reliable that you can give it superpowers and run it at levels far in excess of its rated limits and still have a reliable bike. To do this requires upgrading the controller and we believe that the best option you have is to use the high voltage upgrade kit with the ASI Back855 controller. We haven't really been making much public mention of this kit over the last year because we've had this enormous backlog and wait list of people that have been wanting to use them. We have, however, got things under control now and I wanted to show a video or make a video that shows some of the upgrades and improvements that we've made because we've never just sat back. We've continually evolved the kit and made things better. So this video is about showing some of those because literally every part of it from the, the maps to the harness has been overhauled. When we set out to make this kit, we wanted it to be the most comprehensive that you can get both in terms of the, the parts that we supply, as well as the customer service and the experience that you get when you buy one. And it's only gotten better since it was launched. So we're gonna look now at some of the improvements that have been made. And there are also lots of links to more information in the description. And there's also a video of the high voltage demo bike hauling ass at 72 volts. So the first thing to look at is the harness, and uh, this is this is the older one. And the only real weakness with the back 855 is the JST connector at the back. And what can happen in some cases is that moisture can get in and around this plug and then corrode and short something out inside of the controller. And then it's usually game over for the controller. And this normally happens when you get water running down and getting inside through the shrink wrap. Um, you can also get issues when it's not very, this isn't very flexible. So um, when this is in the back of the controller and it gets torqued down with a zip tie, it can put stress on the joint and create little micro gaps. And that again, makes it easier for any kind of moisture to get in there and cause problems. Like we can mitigate for all of these with careful installation. And honestly, we haven't really had any problems because we take such good care educating people about how to install these properly. However, like just a redesign can really help eliminate this. So if we look at the at the connector now, it has this awesome plastic housing around it and that protects the connection much better than using bundles of heat shrink. It also looks much cleaner and puts much less stress on the thin communication wires that are coming in and out of here. Um, the second part of it was also to, uh, to redesign the controller housing itself and what we've done is to put a supporting plate or piece in here um, so that when this locks into place there's no like you you can't then flex down on that connector um, and that gives it a lot more strength um, Mike's done a really really good job of this and I think it looks really really professional um, much more professional than the existing ones which is how you usually see them the, uh, the mount itself um, has a few more zip tie points in here. And we've also made the back um, significantly smaller. So there's very little room left around the wires once you finish putting it all together. So you can use a small amount of silicone if you really want to seal up the back. Although usually if you use a drip edge and things like that, it's not a problem. The, uh, the next big change that we've made is to go to a key and switch to power the bike on. And while this does mean that you need to power the bike on both at the switch and at the egg rider display, um, it does bring a few advantages. Uh, the first is that you can use the egg rider V2 safely at 72 volts. We were using uh, a special adapter um, to do this to regulate the voltage, but in the end, we just couldn't get an adequate supply of the components to use this technique. Um, the other advantage of using the key and switch is that if you're clever, you can hide the switch out of sight. You don't have to use one on the bars of the bike. You could have it tucked away somewhere quite clever. And then that would prevent somebody from like just 
flipping the bike and powering it on straight away. Uh, if you have kids and you store your bike somewhere where they could access it, it also makes it a little bit more tricky for them to accidentally turn it on by fiddling about with something. Uh, what else? The, uh, the controller maps um, are always being worked on. Uh, we get lots of customer feedback from people using our kit on all kinds of bikes. And that's resulted in quite a few different profiles that can be selected. There are also different profiles depending on what kind of gear is in your motor. Is it the peak? Is it the steel? Is it the regular nylon? And the thermal throttling profile will differ depending on the composition of the motor that you have. So if you have the peak gear, you can run a little bit more power and you can run it a little bit hotter because you're not going to get issues that you might do with the nylon gear. Uh, incidentally, this kit is the only plug and play option that you can get, which has a properly calibrated thermistor to give temperature monitoring and feedback. And you can monitor that temperature directly on the Egg Rider V2 display, where it will give you a motor temp so you can see exactly how hot you're getting on any particular ride. So I want to talk a little bit about customer service because a large part of what makes our kits great and what I'm proud of in particular is that we don't get huge numbers of complaints. And when there is an issue, we deal with it right away to the customer's satisfaction. And we don't get a lot of issues because we do much more than just send out a kit with a sheet of paper and a link to a website for installation. When you get in touch to buy one of our kits, the first thing we'll do is send you a questionnaire and determine your exact requirements because we have quite a few options that you can pick from that will help to ensure that what you get will be a good fit for your bike and be a good fit for your riding style right out of the box. So we don't charge, for example, $50 fees to tweak minor settings because we think it's worth our time to make people happy. So if you want to go from 52 to 72 volts, we'll make sure that you pick the right battery as well as ensuring that there will be no other issues that might occur when you're doing this. If you want to change a peripheral, you can get in touch and we will make sure that you're not going to blow the controller by putting in the wrong thing in the wrong place. It's time spent building relationships with people and trust. And we think that is far more important than getting a few bucks for charging add-on fees. Um, another part of what makes our kits great is the community that comes with them. We built this community before the first kit was ever even sent out. So if you're struggling on pretty much any aspect of things, um, whether it's tires, whether it's the motor, whether it's the, your chain line, whether it's, you know, which gear do you pick, which part's strong enough, right? There is a wealth of knowledge and experience on our Discord um, and in our community. And it's going to save you from making rookie mistakes. And it will also give you, like, if, you know, you get a bit more experience, it will give you the satisfaction of helping out others once you get a bit more experience. Um, the other aspect um, that I think is important with the community is, is safety. And safety is a huge concern for us. And that's why we welcome people to come and get advice on everything from brakes to batteries. If we don't think that our kit is a good fit for your bike, then we'll tell you. If we think that adding the kit to a bike frame or you know a, a current brake system is not right, you know, could be dangerous, if you need to upgrade something, we'll let you know. Um, because it's really important that you have a safe bike and that you ride safely and that you enjoy what we do. I mean, nobody wants to see people get hurt and we like to make sure as best we can um, that won't be the case. So uh, next up for our controller kits will be some information on the higher power stuff that we do for the lightning rods motors as well as like a total revamp of the installation videos. I'm doing a refresh of the fat bike where all of this kind of began really. So it's a good opportunity to make some much more detailed videos on installing this kit because by the time we've done this, like that bike was already built. So it'll be good to strip that down and show people in a lot of detail um, how to install one of these beyond what we already have available. So if you want to find out more about what we do and light electric vehicles in general, uh, you're welcome to join our Discord. It's a super friendly place and it's just packed with people and knowledge 
that just want nothing more than to help each other build the best light electric vehicles. There are links to all of this in the description and you definitely don't need to buy anything that we make in order to be made welcome there. And there is zero snobbery and elitism. So um, that's it for me for this video. Um, I want to say a huge thank you to all of the channel members. You guys make a massive difference here. And also thank you to everyone for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.